OK, so here's the practice that I left you with yesterday. Um, let's have a careful look at these. So we've got 7.1 add 1.98 and we needed to use those connections that we were looking at yesterday. So that's the same sum calculation to help us. So you'll notice 7.1 as that first add end has decreased by one tenth to get seven. So 1.9 needs to increase by one tenth to give us two and seven add two is nine. Therefore, 7.1 add 1.9 is also 9 because the sum remains the same. The one underneath, 2.91 add 3.34, has already been redistributed. And you can see that it's gone up by 9 hundredths. That's right. So 2.91 has increased by 9 hundredths and 3.24 has decreased by 9 hundredths. And now I know I'm going to get that equivalent sum or that same sum, that sum remaining the same. So 3 add 3.15 is 6.15. And therefore the answer to both of those calculations is 6.15. Next one at the top on the right hand side is 2.6 add 3.9. You can see that the 2.6 add end has decreased to 2.5. So the 3.9 add end needs to increase. Oh, that first one's decreased by one tenth, so this one add end needs to increase by one tenth. 3.9 and one tenth more is four. So 2.5 add four, I think you probably know, 6.5. So therefore 2.6 add 3.9 is also 6.5. Final one in section A, 175.7 add 24.86. You can see that the 175.7 has increased by, yep, three tenths to give us 176. So the other number, the other add-in needs to decrease by three tenths. So 24, sorry, 24.86 will go down to 24.56. And now we've got a calculation to make of 176 at 24.56. I've still got to think quite hard to be honest, but I do know my number bonds. 176 add 24 is 200 and then we've got that 0.56 so it's 200.56 and therefore the other calculation has exactly the same sum. Okay, so for the next challenge that I gave you, it was where Salvo says what the best way is to solve these calculations using the same sum. And you can see that on here, I have got the answers for you in case you wanted to see them. Um, but here we're saying that the best way is to solve them using the same sum or those equivalent calculations by redistributing the numbers to make it easier. And Mia disagrees and says that it's quicker to use a written method. And I wanted you to find out yesterday who was right. I wonder, did you actually get around to competing against anybody or did you just make a decision for yourselves? Well, Anybody that knows me knows I am super competitive. So I decided to video myself working both of these out in both ways to see which was the quickest. Um, the only issue is that for the same sum calculations, normally I would do those in my head, but I thought it was a little bit difficult for me to be able to prove to you how quick that could be. So I had to write them down, which slowed me down a little, but we'll see which one was the fastest. Okay, so in a moment, I'm going to play these two videos side by side of me calculating them. And it's going to be a little bit like a race and we'll see which one is the fastest. If any, we'll find out. Okay, so the top one is the same sum or the equivalent calculations and the bottom video is me working it out using a written method. And I just went for the column method just so I had consistency with my written method. Oh, at the moment, I can see the same sum one is just pipping the column one to it. So that's quite exciting for me. You might also notice that on the same sum one, I'm not bothering to write the totals both times because there wasn't any need. And I think the same sum just about won there. So we're going to get started with our learning for today. Um, it's going to be a slightly different focus to the last three lessons. The last three lessons have really been looking at ways to make those equivalent calculations or to redistribute the numbers in order to make it easier or quicker to solve something. But today, that's not going to be our focus. Today, we are just looking at how we can use that same sum to help us to solve and produce balanced equations. 
So in a moment, um, there's going to be a short video clip from my friend, Dr. Sharrock, and I asked her if she would do me a favour and show how when we redistribute something with a mass, that that mass stays the same. She's got some electronic scales to be able to show this by, which you'll see in a moment. Here you can see some weighing scales that I use when I'm baking. On top of the scales are two containers with some cereal inside. What do you notice? That's right, the total mass is 85 grams, but we do not know the mass of each individual part. I'm going to redistribute some of the cereal. Watch what happens. What do you notice? Now when I ask that, I mean what has stayed the same and what is different? This shows some cereal being redistributed from one container to the other. The amount of cereal in one container decreased, whereas the amount of cereal in the other container increased by the same amount. And because of this, the total mass has stayed the same. Let's have a look again at a similar situation, but this time just using a representation that we've got on here. So here you can see that there are two bags on this scale. In total, the mass of the two bags is 45 grams. Let's see what happens. A sweet comes out of one bag and it goes into the other bag. So the mass of the left hand bag of sweets must have decreased because one sweet was removed. But the mass of the right hand bag must have increased because another sweet was put in. But as you can see, our mass, our total mass remains the same. It's been conserved. So this time we're just going to look at this image one more time and think about this generalised statement. When an amount is redistributed from one part to another part, like so, the whole quantity remains the same. Or we can say as one part increases, the other part decreases by the same amount. You might just have spotted that there's a change of scenery behind me. That's because my kitchen was needed by my family. Anyway, let's get back to the lesson. So let's have a look at this diagram this time. What do you notice? Ah, it's changed, hasn't it? Yes, we've now got values on our bags. We've got 35 gram bag and a 10 gram bag of sweets. Watch what happens, watch carefully. Our sweet moves from one bag to the other. Ah, did you spot the five grams at the top? I wonder if that means our sweet weighs five grams or has a mass of five grams. I think it must. So that means that from the left hand bag of sweets, five grams has been removed, so it's been reduced by five. And the right hand bag of sweets, five grams has been added to it, so it's been increased by five. But you notice that that mass has been conserved, it's stayed exactly the same. So even though we've redistributed those sweets, our mass has remained the same. One went down by five grams, the other went up by five grams, but our total or our sum remain the same. And that's really important. Has it made the calculation easier? 35 add 10? It's pretty easy in the first place, wasn't it? It's not made it easier. It's just given us a new distribution of the numbers. I wonder if you could join in and say these sentences with me. So 35 add 10 has the same sum as 30 add 15. 35 add 10 is equivalent to 30 add 15. Or finally, we could say 35 add 10 is equal to 30 add 15. OK, so let's have a look at this diagram. We've got potatoes this time. We've got two bags of potatoes and you might be able to see their total mass is 10,000 grams. That's quite a lot, isn't it? So I think this probably isn't being weighed on kitchen scales, perhaps a different kind of scales. Let's have a careful look at the numbers. The left hand bag has 5,300 grams and the right hand bag has 4,700 grams, which is represented in our calculation. It's quite a straightforward calculation, isn't it? Because you can spot that number bond of the 300 and the 700, making that extra thousand to give us 10,000 altogether. Let's see what happens. One potato comes out, goes into the other bag, and that potato weighs 340 grams. What do you think our new equation is going to be? I'd like you to pause the video here, see if you can say our stem sentence, so one add end has something by a certain amount, the other add end has 
done something else by a certain amount and our sum remains the same. And then can you have a go at writing our new equation? Remember it was the 340 grams that moved from the left hand bag to the right hand bag. Pause the video here and try. Oh right, have you had a go? So the 5,300 gram bag reduced, didn't it, by 340 grams because the potato came out. And the other bag increased by 340 grams because that same potato went into that different bag. And what were your new totals? Ah, 5,300, subtract 340. I'm going to subtract 300 first to get me to 5,000. Then I'm going to subtract 40. And that's going to give us 4,960. And on the other one, increasing it by 340 will get us 5,040. Did you get the same? And we still have a total of 10,000. So we've got our two calculations, 5,300 plus 4,700 is equivalent to 4,960 add 5,040. Because we've subtracted from one add end and added to the other add end to keep that sum the same and it was that same amount that we subtracted and that we added. Fantastic. Can you join in with me on the stem sentences now? 5,300 plus 4,700 has the same sum as 4,960 add 5,040. I'll let you read the rest. I hope you said all of the numbers correctly, especially at the bottom. 5,300 add 4,700 equals 4,960 add 5,040. And all of those relate back to that potatoes picture that we've just been looking at. Ah, we've got the potatoes again. Do you notice anything this time? The numbers have changed, haven't they? We've got 10 kilograms. I can imagine that a little bit more easily than I can 10,000 grams. I wonder why. I'll let you think about that. OK, so in our left hand bag this time we have 5.3 kilograms and in our right hand bag we have 4.7 kilograms. Some of you might have spotted something about the numbers, but we're going to talk about that in a moment. OK, let's see what happens. So 5.3 kilograms plus 4.7 kilograms is equal to 10. And we can see, can't we, that our three tenths here and our seven tenths here make one whole, don't they? So therefore we have got ten all together. Let's see what happens. Oh, a potato's coming out again from that left hand bag going into the right hand bag. This time it weighs 0 0.34 kilograms or 34 hundredths of a kilogram. OK. Can you write the new calculation? So remember, the left hand add end has just decreased by 0 0.34 kilograms and the right hand add end has increased by 0 0.34 kil kilograms. Can you pause the video here and have a think about what the new equation is going to be? Have you done it? Let's see whether you got the same as me. So the first and then decreased by 0 0.34 and the other increased by 0 0.34. OK. Oh, a little bit harder the numbers this time, aren't they? I wonder how you got to that. Remember, 5.3, if we subtract the um, 3 tenths from the 0 0.34, that will get us to 5. And then we've still got to subtract the 4 hundredths and 5, subtract 4 hundredths. A hmm, bit hard, but we know that 100 hundredths make a whole, so 4 hundredths less than that would be 96 hundredths, so we've got 4.96. And on the other one, for 4.7, we needed to increase it by 0 0.34. So again, if we add on the 0 0.3, the 3 tenths of 3, 0 0.34 to the 4.7, we'd get 5, wouldn't we? And then we've got to add on a further 4 hundredths to give us 5.04 definitely hasn't made the calculation easier but they are still balanced and they are still equivalent so 5.34 add 4.7 is equal to 4.96 add 5.04 we have a balanced equation let's have a look at these two diagrams side by side now i want you to make some notes about what you notice is the same 
and what you notice is different between the two representations. So if you could pause the video here and write some of those down or discuss them with someone in your house and then we'll come back in a moment. Did you manage it? OK, what did you notice? Yes, you're right. There are two sacks of potatoes on both sets of scales, aren't there? Did you notice anything else? Ah, some of the digits are the same. So, for example, did you notice that here on this left hand side, our 5300 has the same digits, the five and the three, the five in the thousands columns and the three in the hundreds column, as we have here, the five in the ones column and the three in the tenths column. You might have spotted it with the 4,700. We've got the four in the thousands column and the seven in the hundreds column. And over here, we've got the four in the ones column and the seven in the tenths column. Same digit, same order. There's a relationship, isn't there? Hmm. Can you remember what it is? Ah, something that's different that you might have spotted is that one's in grams and one's in kilograms. Do you think that's significant? How many grams are there in a kilogram? Yes, there's a thousand. So if you think there's 1,000 grams in one kilogram, then how many grams are there going to be in five kilograms? That's right, 5,000. So 5,000 grams is five kilograms. So you can see that relationship here. 5,000 grams is five kilograms, but it's not just 5,000 grams, it's also got 300 grams. 300 grams is three tenths of a kilogram. So actually, our sacks of potatoes have the same mass. It's just one's represented in grams and one's represented in kilograms. That's also true of our 4,700 grams been represented in kilograms over here, same mass. And of our 10,000 grams, that's equivalent to 10 kilograms. So we could actually put up another equivalent calculation here. 5,300 grams plus 4,700 grams is the same as 5.3 kilograms at 4.7 kilograms. But I've not redistributed the numbers here. It's just that we've had a change of units from grams to kilograms. OK, so now it's time for us to have a go at one together before you do some independent practice. So I'd like you to have a look at these equations here. We've got 4.2 plus 5.8 is equal to 10. Have a look at what's changed, what's been redistributed. Did you spot it? So it's showing here that we're increasing this add end by 0.24. So have a think about what we're going here. That's right, it would decrease by 0.24 because if I have subtracted 0.24 from one add end, I need to add 0.24 to the other add end to keep the sum the same. Hmm. Can you work out for me what would go in the box down here? I'll give you a moment to think about that. So yes, we need to increase 5.8 by 0.24, which would give us 6.04, because remember, 5.8 add on the two tenths from the 0.4 will get us to six and then we've still got our four hundredths to make 6.04. So I have subtracted, remember, 0.24 from one add end, so I need to add 0.24 to the other add end to keep the sum the same. So now we have a balanced equation, 4.2 add 5.8, are you saying it with me, is equal to 3.96 add 6.04. OK, so now it's time for your independent practice. You're going to start with having a look at these equations at the top and filling in all of these empty boxes, just like we did on the previous slide. And the same here for 6.5 and 3.5 and fill in all of those empty boxes. Carefully consider our sentence, which was if we increase one add end by one amount, we need to decrease the other add end by the same amount to keep our sum the same. And then your challenge down here, it says to use the same original add -ends. That means use your original 4.2 add 5.8 or use your original 6.5 add 3.5 and then redistribute them differently. 
And instead of, if we're on this one, instead of increasing one by 0 0.24 and the other decreasing by 0 0.24, choose your own increases or decreases. Try and make them as challenging as you like, okay? So some of you, you might want to make them really, really hard. Others might just want to explore those numbers and find some new balanced equations. I hope you enjoy it. Take care, everybody.